Good morning and welcome to today's virtual bridge, which has been called that Friday Freeling. I think we went and uh, had the option of on the lamb with Ken J or going that extra mile in uh, PowerPoint with Jason, but we have went for that Friday Freeling. So you've got three presenters today. I'm going to start off on PowerPoint coaching. So there's a lovely little tool in PowerPoint that will actually tell you how to be a better PowerPoint presenter. Then we're going to move on to the three Ps with Jason, who's going to take us through how to make a more visually um, catching PowerPoint presentation. And then Kenji's going to take us through what he is describing as a Prezi killer. So uh, Kenji's unearthed some even more new functionality in PowerPoint that is going to make your experience of it better. So I'm going to take you through, and on purpose, this is going to be a terrible presentation. So I can relax knowing that you are going to not be able to criticize any mistakes that I make. So I shall share my screen. And hopefully you can now see this. Now, I've not went straight to slideshow for a reason here. For the presentation coaching, you open up PowerPoint, you have to be online for this. So it is PowerPoint online with Office 365. So go to office.com, sign in with your usual Microsoft credentials, choose PowerPoint, open up the PowerPoint you would like to practice, and it will take you to this screen. At the top here, you can see a ribbon. We're in home just now. We go to slideshow. We go to rehearse with coach. And then I have the uh, down the bottom right, hopefully you should see start rehearsing. And I can have that button checked for show real time feedback. So PowerPoint is going to criticize me in real time for my presentation skills. Or you can uncheck that box and just at the end, you will get the uh, a summary of how you have presented if you don't like the presentation, uh, PowerPoint criticizing you in real time. So let us start rehearsing. Presentation coaching, because the machines probably know best. You will need Office 365, an internet connection, a willingness to listen to a machine tell you how to be a better human, how to access the functionality. Get, go to your Office 365 using a web browser, open PowerPoint, choose a presentation you would like to practice on. You can now see that the presentation coach is telling me that I am not presenting very well because I'm merely reading out what is on the screen. So it's telling me, summarize on, please don't bore your audience by just reading out all these words. And we've already went through, go to slideshow, rehearse with coach, etc. Let's move to the next slide. So the elements that you are coached on, criticized on, are that summarize function that we saw. Um, uh, well, uh, you see, um, I think um, I'm trying to make the, um, okay, it's telling me I'm using too many ums down the bottom right there. Excellent. So it, again, it tells me a little bit of uh, information that can make my presentations better. I've tried to make repetition, 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 repetition work, but even while practicing this, because practice is important, I've not been able to get it to um, pull me up for repetition. Perhaps my Scottish accent is a little hard for it to understand. Tone. So when you start talking like this, like that very boring guy in Father Ted, you know, the priest with the moustache, at some point it would say, oh, um, that we should. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, it says 1 minute 44. We will be able to see a graph later that shows that I have been speaking in a, a very boring way. And I was trying to speak so slowly it would tell me to speed up because in Soviet Russia, PowerPoint gets bored of you. And also swearing. If I had the courage of my convictions to swear here, then I could get it to tell me that I was being a naughty boy. Something that is also uh, pulled up as Sometimes when I say fellows, it thinks I'm saying fellows. So fellows, 
And, yep, it's telling me that fellows might be offensive or non-inclusive in some cases. So that's quite interesting. So if you say policeman, I might come up and say I should be using police officer. Brilliant. Um, so there's also a little bit of a political correctness filter, which obviously is set for Western sensibilities and what you consider to be um, acceptable may vary. And then just to show you, if I had used the F word, it would have came up and told me that I had used the F word. Getting to the end of the presentation, it then gives me this lovely report. So it can show, it shows you here, I'll just have to move my little video out of the way. My pitch at 144, it did dip down into monotone when I was doing the Father Ted impression. Um, you can click underneath each, each one for learn more if you want to know why your pace wasn't considered great. I'm, I seem to be in the green zone here. Um, it tells me that I wasn't being that original in slide three. And overall, I find this very good because I hate listening or watching myself on video, but this allows me to get that feedback without the pain of having to record it and watch through my hands as I progress. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, we'll move on and if there's any questions, we'll try and do that at the end. If I could then stop my sharing and I might ask Kenji to use his magic there because I don't know how to stop sharing here. That's something I should have done. Thank you. And I'll hand over to Jason for the three Ps of Visual PowerPoint. Thank you very much and feel free to put in uh, coaching hints into the chat pane in real time during my uh, short presentation. I I'm not going to use a visual aid and the reason for that is I'm going to start with the rhetoric question. What is the most powerful visual aid? Yes, and you're right, you are. People form impressions very rapidly. You have presence. Uh, you are the star of the show. Um, and, uh, and and that's why one has to be quite careful when it comes around to using other visual aids such as PowerPoint, uh, because you don't really want to be competing with yourself. And so one easy tip at the beginning is the B key on your keyboard if, um, when you're presenting, which blanks the screen. Uh, the, um, so if you're using PowerPoint, either uh, online or in person, um, then the B key is a powerful one to get the audience looking at you rather than at the screen. I learned quite a lot, and I'm doing the fluffy bit, uh, from presentation training that I did recently after 25 years of doing many presentations as a lawyer and as a lecturer um, and as a representative of JISC. Then it was the first time I'd actually been subjected to uh, presentation training, but it was actually very, very engaging because it was presented by an actor. And an actor, of course, lives in a world where the entire focus is on the person. Uh, the props um, are seen in the background, but it's the person that matters. Um, but the one um, episode from the training that actually um, they, they turned my attention most uh, was when we were doing a practice and one of my fellow um, uh, participants in the training uh, was delivering. And uh, she was perhaps a little less confident than I am standing up in front of an audience. But what I really noticed was when she was presenting and she had, as many people do, slides with too many words, that as soon as a slide came up, everyone's attention went to the slide and they forgot about her. And yet she was a very capable presenter. She was engaging and she was making an impact in what she was, with what she was saying. Uh, however, everyone's attention was over there uh, on the slide. So the question is, when is it appropriate to take people's attention away and when, is it, when do you want it back? We had a very interesting exercise and it's one you might try yourself because it's difficult. It's almost as difficult as rubbing your belly and tapping your head. And that's called touch, turn, talk. And what we had to do in order to fulfill touch, turn, talk is whenever showing a visual aid, such as a PowerPoint slide, uh, we had to touch the slide. We had to turn back. And until we had turned back, we weren't allowed to talk. That was kind of tricky to do. I suspect we've all been subjected to people presenting whilst facing the other way. Um, and um, I, I'm looking at the slides, uh, looking at a board, whatever it may be, uh, and we know how much of a turn off that, that is. So um, I've avoided uh, uh, graphics here because I think my point is uh, easily remembered by three Ps. And so when you're thinking of PowerPoint, then I want you to think of Ps. And these three Ps are the following, pair, picturize, and populate. Now, pair is not the fruit. 
pare is P-A-R-E, cutting it down. And so look for the most important, look for the takeaway. I think we all know deep down um, that putting your script on a big screen or presented in half of the uh, the visual space in front of the, the learner on their screen um, isn't the, the, the best uh, for a whole bunch of text. If it's reference material, it can go somewhere else. And um, because actually PowerPoint's not a great mechanism for delivering um, material unless it's interactive. And we've seen some good visual, uh, virtual bridge sessions on how it can be made in this good standalone learning resources indeed. Uh, but that's a different purpose than a, you know, as a presentation visual aid. Uh, as I say, st simply sticking the script up, which is often what happens, and Owen's demonstrated how the coach can tell you off for simply reading out your slides, then so much the better. So pare it down for impact. And that second point, picturize. Um, visual aid is the key here. And we often, and it's a natural comfort mechanism, um, use um, the visual aid to present a whole bunch of text. And that's not particularly visual. So um, think about the impact, thinking about, about the, from the audience perspective, what is going to stick, and then get that up there as, as a picture or a video or, or an interactive element, depending on the context. So we've got pair and picture eyes. Thirdly, populate. Uh, remember a presentation is a journey. You're looking to take the audience somewhere. And so each slide represents a step. And keeping it to one step per slide is a good way of making sure that they understand the journey that they're on. Um, so keep it to a single step, keep it well-defined, make sure it's thematic, make sure in the context is clear as to where you're taking the learner from and where they're going to. I find a very good example of all the pair picturize and populate method are TED Talks. They can be a bit formulaic, um, but actually their use of visual aids, I think is uh, pretty much all across the, the board very good. So they're used sparingly, visual aids, um, um, but uh, they, are, they are visual and they're there for clear impact. And presenters are always very good at turning back um, to their audience and regaining the attention of the audience. So my ask of you out of this is whenever you come around to using PowerPoint and you're thinking about PowerPoint, well, first of all, make sure you need to use PowerPoint. I've decided in this one here, you can remember three Ps, pair, picturize, and populate. So you don't need those three words up on a slide. Um, Keep those in mind, keep it short, keep it impactful, and remember, you are the star of the show. Excellent, thank you very much. And we will now hand over to Kenji, please. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of the things I should have asked is really, what, what were you gonna talk about today? Because that would have then <laughs> prepared me. So like I'm oh, doing all the things I shouldn't be doing, but, but, okay, so I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to populate my <laughs> presentation and not pare it down at all. Uh, let me share my screen and show you what I've been doing uh, <laughs> recently. Right, right. Uh, where will I go? Um, let's go with my screen because sometimes I share my um, my PowerPoint and I jump around with it. Right. So this is PowerPoint. It's just just your standard. PowerPoint, I guess, um, set of slides. Uh, I think this is version, oh, this is Office 365's PowerPoint, but it's probably equivalent to Office 2016, 2019. Um, and all the functional functionality that I'm gonna show is, is in those versions. Um, <clears throat> now I was gonna talk about add-ins at the beginning. Um, add-ins, unless you uh, haven't noticed it, are available inside the insert area. And basically when you get add-ins, you can select like a bunch of plugins that you can put into PowerPoint and do more with. Unless of course, it's been configured <laughs> so that only your admin can actually add in plugins, which is probably the case in most colleges. Now, th the thing is, I've, I've used add-ins for quite a while. Um, and I might show you one that I still find kind of good. But PowerPoint has come on in such, such leaps and bounds over the last couple of years that a lot of the stuff that I used to use plugins for are now handled internally within PowerPoint itself. Um, we did a, a virtual bridge presentation on recording PowerPoints and, and changing those into instructional videos. Tons of really useful stuff in there. Um, not gonna cover that today. What I'm gonna cover is <laughs> zooming. And, and zooming is a feature that was added into PowerPoint, actually 
probably a, a year or two ago. Um, and I only noticed it a little while ago. But it is awesome. And I, I don't know if you've made much use of sections and zooming. But one of the bugbears I had about PowerPoint in general is just it's kind of linear nature. And also for the fact that when I got copies of people's slides, it, I had to kind of trawl through to see the point that I was kind of interested in. So I'm interested always in kind of alternative ways to navigate through PowerPoint. And Zooming does this for me in a way that I used to do very manually myself. So inside the insert menu, you'll find an option here called Zoom. Um, and it's just, it's hidden there. It kind of just popped up at some point, who knew? Um, and Zoom can do a few different things. Summaries, sections, and slides. So sections is not something that I initially knew much about, but if you're in your slide deck and if you click in between, you can actually add sections to slides. So you can actually group your, your slides into sections, right? So this, this Zoom feature is kind of makes use of that. So you click on Zoom, and this time I'm going to do a summary zoom. Now, summary zoom presents you with your entire slide deck and it asks you, like, do you want to cut this up into sections? Um, and everyone you select then becomes the start of a section. So if I select slide two, that's gonna be my first section. Uh, then I'm gonna go randomly, whatever this slide was. Um, this is my third section. I'm going to do this as a section. So it means all the slides that follow after the one I've selected are part of that section. So I, I honestly don't remember what these ones are about. But um, oh, there's probably something on Excel I did. That's a video. Um, is there a oh, oh, the video probably on its own? How many do I have? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's have another one. Uh, one at the end. Right, okay, slide 30. Right. So I'm going to insert all of these. And what, what PowerPoint's now doing is it's created all those sections, but it's put them all as kind of live tiles onto one slide. Um, you can manipulate this because when you click on an individual tile, you get this new zoom option in your your menu bar up at the top here and when you click on it you get a bunch of options around what you might want to do with it now i'm just going to leave these all at default but you can do things like remove um the zoom background uh, which basically takes away your you know whatever other than the main content on the slide it takes the background and all the slide master stuff off uh, i'm just going to leave it in there for just now because i'm going to do something else with it so let me see what this does what does it do? This is the awesome part. So this is the slide presentation. So this is my slide deck. So if I'm going to start talking about what I'm going to cover, I click on it, zooms in, and now I'm going to go through that section that I just talked about. And when I reach the end of my section, it comes back out. Now I can jump into any section here and it'll just do exactly that same thing. I mean, like, I, I know that doesn't seem like much, but honestly, honestly, that is awesome. When you think about if you have a big slide deck and you're passing it on to students, you can you can set it up so that you put it into chunks and they can find the bit that they actually want and go through. And, you know, it's 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 not an overly heavy transition, just zooming in and out. It's, it's quite a nice effect, but it does give you this idea that you can jump back into bits. You don't necessarily need to follow a linear progression when it comes to presenting your slides. So it's it's it's. It's nice. It's a nice feature. Now, you've got other options inside here. This this is my this is my Prezi killer thing, um, <coughs> which I'm totally going to finish in a minute or two. Um, so my Prezi killer thing is like I made up some slides here. Um, with with this format, you can um, use uh, another aspect of the the zoom, and this is slide zooms. So what what slide zooms basically do? is they take individual slides and put them all onto the screen, same as you did before. But you can kind of transition in a Prezi-like way between each of the slides on the one screen. Um, so just to give you an example of what to do, so here's a, a bunch of slides I made up earlier um, <laughs> in true Blue Peter fashion. So if I do zoom and I do a slide zoom, I'm going to add another um, slide here, insert in. So here's, here's this kind of live uh, 
slide that I've stuck in. And if I make any changes on, on the actual slide, they'll be reflected here because they're kind of live versions of this slide. Now I'm just going to make it um, smaller so that it uh, fits onto my little post-it note here, just to make it look cool. Um, you also notice that there's a tiny sort of um, background also that it puts on it. So what I do is I go into Zoom and I take off the, the Zoom border. I just say no outline. So it just makes it look cool. Right. <clears throat> now, uh, the other thing I want to do is one of the options you have is you can return to Zoom. So at the moment, in the individual slide setup, when I start running it, it will jump from each slide one to another. But when I get to my last one, I'm going to tick this box that says return to Zoom and it'll bring me back to my main page. It becomes obvious when you see it, but look, wait, this Prezi killer, Prezi killer, who knew? Right. So here's here's my slide deck. And, and basically, I've got snapshots of the, the five slides that I had, but wait for this. First slide, Prezi din. That's what it's all about. Pressing space to go to my next slide. Ah, oh, look at this. I mean, how awesome is this? Look, Prezi. There you go. Not, not that I have anything against Prezi. It's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> the fact that I can do it in, in, in PowerPoint. That's so cool. Like I could probably do it just with the animation tools that are in there. But the fact that it's just set up to do this is <laughs> for all the people that like Prezi, you know, it's fine. But I, I find Prezi, like once I've seen like lots of them, they, they, they just get a bit boring. But sometimes it can be really cool to sort of set up a Prezi kind of uh, interface and then jump in between things just to show something in one context, but not use it all the time. And then just go back to regular presentation after that. Um, and that's, and that's, that's the Zoom functionality. Right, I've got um, 1124. Right, I'm going to I'm going to quickly, very very quickly, uh, because I know that <laughs> Jason and Owen have to go to another session at the moment. I am going to present using um, Slice. So there's a character called Slice in the participants here, and Slice is basically just I think it's a gamer tag I use uh, on another older computer. Um, and in this case, um, it's an old version <laughs> of PowerPoint that I have running here. And it's, um, well, not one that's owned by my company or the CDN. <laughs> so I can do what I like with it. Uh, right. So inside here, um, this is just like a, a, a simple um, blank PowerPoint in 2013. I've got insert here. Uh, I've got my apps, right? So in my apps, I've, there's a few apps that I've used in the past, right? Um, the one that I find kind of still interesting, not not so much the others now, um, is Fet Sims, which has been around for a while. It's like it was, I think it, who made it? It's, it's like a, one of the American universities, I think, created a series of interactive elements that you could drop into PowerPoint. Um, it's around 40 of them. They're all STEM kind of things. Um, and they, they just work as slides. They just use essentially PowerPoint sort of animations um, beefed up a little bit. So you can, let's see, which one, which one uh, was I looking at? Well, you can play with loads of them, but um, let's look at the circuit thing. That's kind of cool. Um, let's see if it loads up. Yep. Okay. So it's working. I'm going to insert it into my slide. And if I make it a bit bigger, let's see. I'm always rubbish at selecting the ends of this just to make it bigger. But it just it works like you've just embedded, you know, a graphic. And so when you're running this as a slide. Like the intro, it has all these things in it where you build these interactive elements, um, working tools, experiments. It's not, it's not massively um, complicated. Like some of the interactions are really simple. It's designed for schools. It's designed for, um, I suppose, up to kind of college level, maybe. They do say that it can be used with university. It was designed in a university. Um, some of them are quite sophisticated. Uh, so with this, you know, I think I can <laughs> turn on a circuit. I can use a, a voltmeter and I can, I think, judge the voltage of, 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 of various things um, when it's on. And like it, 
it's the the stuff it's got in it like this is like an easy example but some of the other sort of um parts that it has so if i, I make a, a new slide then i can just add in another one um let's see what was the one i liked there's a whole bunch of them i just ended up playing with for ages um which probably says something about me really but <laughs> Some of them are really worth using. Like if I was in a class, some of the examples that they have are they're just really, really nice, simple introductions um, to usually physics concepts, some engineering concepts um, done in a really interactive way. So this oh, one. Sorry to, sorry to butt in, Kenji. Um, for a change, normally we hang about a little bit after. Oh, right. Okay, okay, no worries. Yeah, uh, anyone could look for it themselves. It's 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 just a, you know, it's a thing. <laughs> okay, so Kenji will be staying behind to answer any burning questions that anyone has. Unfortunately, Jason and I are popping off just now for uh, an 11.30. But please do join us for a future virtual bridge. And if you're watching this on the recorded YouTube channel, please hit the like button down below and tell all your friends. Thanks very much.